the rapid pace of this erosion of trust, it, 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 it's, there's not an unlimited supply of it. Right. And at some point, there is a tipping point. Mm -hmm. And when we lose our democracy, it's very, very hard to get it back. And if we don't have a set of rules and a framework that we all agree upon and we can all thrive within, then, you know, I, th I think it's a very, very, very different country and a, a very different world. This is Rob Johnson, President of the Institute for New Economic Thinking. I'm here today with Frank McCourt. McCourt Global, in conjunction with Science Po, Georgetown University, and hopefully recruiting many more, is looking at the nature of democracy, the nature of governance, in the context of the technological platforms we have here today. And the challenges that his project, Project Liberty, is raising, and these people are working on, from the vantage point of the common good in humankind, is an extraordinary in endeavor and an extraordinary example. Frank, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure being here with you, Robin. Thanks for speaking kindly about the project. I really appreciate it. it I find that effortless to be enthusiastic after learning about it. Let's talk first about your inspiration. Then we'll talk about what to do. But I, I'm curious, in your own mind, where did this vision come from? Where, what inspired you to launch in this direction? Yeah, well, I think um, I was inspired in part because of a great deal of concern about the you know, direction things are headed in a country I love and mm -hmm. in a country that my family for five generations has been a part of building. And um, I suppose if I dig deeper and really think about where does it all come from, it comes from a, a, a certain upbringing. You know, I think about my great-grandfather every day, you know, an immigrant coming to this country at 13 and then starting a business in the late 1800s, building roads when Henry Ford started building cars. And, and then literally, as I said, building, building this great country. And, uh, sitting as a steward of a, of a family and a business of five generations, um, it, up until a decade or so ago, I, I never thought we'd be sitting here talking about the sustainability of democracy or, or capitalism for that matter. Um, but I became very concerned about that and, and wanted to, to do something about it. And that's what is really the impetus behind this project is not, not sitting, sitting idly by and complaining about it or opining on the problem. It's, it's actually trying to get in the game and do something to fix it. And, and lastly, I would just say that, um, you know, again, growing up in Boston, large Irish, Irish Catholic family, seven kids, and, you know, so nine at the table, minimum, often many mm -hmm. more, uh, you can imagine that environment and what it was like. And we as kids were very good at defining the problem. Mm. And my parents would always remind us before dinner was out, you've done a great job defining the problem, now what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And Project Liberty is trying to do something about a really big problem. Yeah, I remember reading in some of the interviews that you've done that uh, you talked about America being, the, which you might call the product of migration, mm -hmm. that people picked up and did something different. They moved. It was geographic migration. And my sense was you were imparting to us that we may be in the same square miles. It's not about picking up and running away. It's about m migrating our systems to be better and more supportive of humankind. Yeah, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't agree with that assessment more. It's um, when things are not good, when we live in a physical place, uh, and we see this over and over, unfortunately, in the world, um, people leave where they're at when things become intolerable. But they do need a place to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, that's human migration of a physical nature. And this very country, as you point out, was, is the product of a physical migration from a regime, a, you know, a, a structure, right, where people felt under represented or not represented, didn't have a, didn't, uh, no, would no longer tolerate, you know, a, a, a feudal system, uh, a monarchy, etc. And, um, uh, and 
the, the form of governance mm -hmm. and uh, w what their lives were like. And so they picked up and left and started a new project mm -hmm. ca called America. New governance, a yeah. new model, a new set of values, and, a, and a, uh, a new set of principles. And we've all lived with the benefit of, of, that, of that physical act. Well, well now we're, we're living in a digital world and very, very powerful, large structure, which is, uh, in my opinion, and I'm just sharing an opinion, is very, very unhealthy. And uh, not only unhealthy, is eroding trust at such a rate that the very systems that we rely on, i.e. democracy and capitalism, which are built on the premise of trust, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, when you destroy the trust, you, 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 the, the systems crumble. Yeah. It, it, I, there's, there's no logic that I'm aware of that if you remove the underpinning of a, of a system, that it will, it will survive. So it's, I think, a very, very important time for us to define clearly, see clearly the problem, but I hope not dwell on the problem, but now really gather up our, 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 our most creative selves, mm -hmm. our best selves in a way, and do something about it. You know, the, the what are you going to do about it? Mom, answer to that question. Mom's echo in your ears. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, well, I think that not wallowing in the sorrow of, how we say, recognizing we're in this difficult place and moving forward is a key part of what I'll call the example you're setting. There are lots of different things people talk about. They talk about climate change. They talk about the military and the dangers of the Ukraine. They talk about instability in the financial system and what have you. Project is focusing on what? what what's the place you're zooming in on to make the difference? Yeah, we're, we're zooming in on what we see as core, a core fundamental problem. And if we solve it, the chances of solving all those other problems increases enhanced, mightily. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're not suggesting that Project Liberty, Liberty solves all the problems in the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. or that changing tech changes all human behavior. What we're saying is that the current architecture of the internet uh, is flawed. Mm -hmm. And it can't be fixed merely by regulation or by tweaking it around the edges. We need to fix the model and change it completely and make the old model obsolete. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, maybe by, by putting this into some context, when I refer to technology, uh, I want to be clear, and the problems associated with it. I'm talking about the idea of uh, extracting and explo exploiting our data surveillance capitalism and just surveillance period you know mm -hmm. I, I is it, it feels to me very incompatible with democracy mm -hmm. and the other is social media mm -hmm. and how it is it, it is designed actually to optimize for rage optimize for anger mm -hmm. because that creates stickiness or time on online it, it, you get what you optimize for with technology. Yeah. Technology yeah. is just a tool, right? And like a hammer. A hammer mm -hmm. is a tool. Yeah. It's you a and means I can, to an end. It's and not we can the go end out itself. and we can go out and build a house with that hammer, yeah. or we can go out and, and kill someone with that hammer. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. Yeah. And so we need the technology, I believe, to support democracy, to support a fair form of capitalism. Mm -hmm. And and I, it can. So um, uh, I, I don't want to come across as being pessimistic in the least. I want to be realistic about the magnitude of the problem, but I'm highly optimistic mm -hmm. that if we fix the fundamental flaws with, the te with technology and in in how it's currently being deployed, we can not only solve and strengthen our democracy, we can actually then be in a position to solve other problems that have been really very difficult to even grasp how could we solve that if we can't even agree, for instance, on facts, you know, and so on yeah. and so forth. So if yeah. we can reset the technology and kind of reclaim our public square, refocus it all on the, on the common good, that th this technology be, should be serving a purpose. Mm -hmm. It should be for people and mm -hmm. for society and strengthening, not for platforms. Mm -hmm. And just to, just to you know, create as much uh, monetary value 
at whatever cost. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we're, if we can fix the technology and, and, and redirect it to work for democracy and for society, I think we're going to find solving these other problems much, much uh, easier, yeah. or at least much more possible. No, if you get it right, then the systems are more responsive to what you might call detecting discord and evolving towards a positive outcome. If the systems are refracted by that yearning, like you said, fomenting rage to increase time, to increase the advertising rate for the vendors. Not a good formula for democracy. It doesn't have anything to do with, how do you say, meeting the challenges. Yeah, and, and, and let's think about this for, for, for a minute. If, you're, if your mantra uh, or mission is, uh, is statement is to quote, move fast and break things, well, we're, we move fast. Mm -hmm. and we're breaking things. If, on the other hand, it's move fast and fix things, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe we can fix a few things, yeah. and maybe we can replace some of this despondency we're seeing all around mm -hmm. with a real hopefulness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that's, that, that's very, very possible. You know, we're, we've, we've been beneficiaries um, of, of institutions that have supported these operating systems, democracy and capitalism, very well or reasonably well, let's say, over mm -hmm. the last 70 years, really post, I'm talking about post-World War II. But that was an analog world. And now we're living in a digital world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't expect that a set of institutions designed to support these key operating systems will function at, at the highest level when the, we're now moved from analog world to digital world. Right. So we need a new civic architecture mm -hmm. for a digital world. And uh, again, it, it's, it, to me, I, um, I'm very hopeful uh, at the same time that, that I'm very concerned because I, I think I've seen over and over again the ingenuity of people, particularly Americans, to, to innovate and create once we get directed and aligned. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, the, the, the very unfortunate part of things is that the technology itself is causing polarization and misalignment yes. and, and misinformation and so on and so forth. So we, we need to fix the, the, this problem at the, at, at the root cause to, um, to then in turn solve for lots of, uh, lots, for lots of problem solving and, and lots of improvement for society and, and, uh, and, and humanity. So, yeah, I, th I think it's a very, very critical, critical yeah. moment for all of us. Well, as you mentioned, with the social media, you can bombard and denigrate, be vicious, not even be truthful, but really take people down. When you look at surveys, whether it's Gallup or Richard Edelman or whatever, the trust and faith in academic experts, scientists, government agencies, corporate leaders are all collapsing. Yeah, and it's, it's the key, it's the key, single key thing mm -hmm. that these systems are built on is trust. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, if you lose, if we lose trust person to person uh, or at, at a societal level, uh, as I said earlier, I, I don't think the systems have a, have a chance. It's, mm -hmm. it's logic, you know, they, they, they're built, the very foundation they're built on needs to be strong yeah. and needs to be maintained. That's what really, uh, anim that's what continues to animate me, but that's what got me off the sidelines here, is just a mm -hmm. grave concern that the, the rapid pace of this erosion of trust, it, 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 it's, there's not an unlimited supply of it, right. and at some point there is a tipping point, mm -hmm. and when we lose our democracy, it's very, very hard to get it back. And I, I want to see our, our family's business thrive for another five generations. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the country. And I want to see other people's business, businesses thrive and survive. And, and if we don't have a set of rules and a framework that we all agree upon and we can all thrive within, then, you know, I, I think it's a very, very, very different country and a, a very different world. And uh, you know, so I, I, I hope that you know, many people 
will get involved. And it may not be, our, our idea may not be the best idea. There, there may be someone else out there with a better idea. And if there is, I want to support that person and those ideas. Yeah, yeah. But let's let's evolve together and, and let's make this a collective project. It's it's yeah. a, uh, I think this is a, this is a project that, uh, this is a problem big enough for all of us to pay attention to, yes. and to get involved in. And you know, Project Liberty, um, you know, ha has three tracks associated with it. It's not just a tech solution to a tech problem. Yeah, there's a tech track and a tech solution. Something we call a decentralized social networking protocol, which we've created, mm -hmm. which is open source, and we've gifted to to humanity. And if adopted, it would fundamentally change how the internet works. But there's also a governance track and a movement track because we really feel people need to get involved. Society needs to get involved to fix this and want to see it fixed. And this time around, we need to have uh, real governance. You know, we need to, and by governance, I mean we need a conversation and agreement upon what are the values and the principles that we're going to agree on here that we want the technology to support mm -hmm. and to help thrive. In other words, let's, if we want, democracy to thrive. Let's optimize for democracy, not rage. I'm looking at um, the challenge. You're a beacon. You're going for it. You're seeing it in this larger context of the common good and the systems that support them. My sense is in a time where expertise has been denigrated to engender trust is a formidable challenge. And I'm, I guess I'm saying people have their habits. You're building a new platform. How do we, how do we catalyze the shift to the new platform to recognize the, what you might call collective health of going from dependence on those systems to these new systems? You know, I think, um, I, again, I, I could be missing the mark here. But I, I'm a huge believer in, in people. Mm -hmm. And I've seen time after time after time, if there's, a, if there's something that's credible, authentic, doable, can be very bold, but doable and hopeful, people get very excited about it mm -hmm. and rally, rally behind it mm -hmm. and make it happen. If, if we can replace some of this despondency that's creating this, uh, you know, this instability and mm -hmm. this leading to this lack of trust and so on and so forth with a, a hopefulness uh, and a future that is, that people can see it as a possibility, I think we can ch change the, shift the energy completely here. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're stuck. And there's very little discussion about the future, right? There's a lot of discussion about um, past grievances and lots of discussion about, mm -hmm. you know, can we make things like they used to be and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're stuck. When people are afraid, they become nostalgic. They lurch backward rather than evolving yeah. forward many times. Yeah, and they want to rec recreate a time that Maybe even wasn't felt really <laughs> wasn't really like they think, but it was. Mm -hmm. It felt like you say it felt better. Mm -hmm. If we can feel better about the future, why not go for it? Yeah. People, uh, people want what makes them feel better, right? Yeah. If it's right. if it's real, I think that what we're seeing though is that in in the recent past, people are being sold something about you know making them feel better. That's not genuine, right? You know, it's a mirage. And it's not, yeah. not being spoken to honestly. Well, and if we, if we have a project that's a collective project, right? It's not just one person's project or one thing. It's not like that. It's a collective project. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's something, it's, let's put that man on the moon again mm -hmm. and do it collectively and be excited about it and feel good about it. I think that changes completely yeah. the dynamic. I think that we are in a place where wallowing in fear creates otherness, blame, hostility, polarity, but it also, none of, none of those things help you regenerate. 
when you say stuck, uh, that's the word that really came to my mind, is when, when you're stuck, there's a lot of work done in mind science about the three regions of the brain and you know the old parables of fight and flight and so forth. Absolutely. But when you shame people, things get worse. Absolutely. And the nature, the healing, the moving beyond is about, like you said, that regeneration of trust. And my Chinese friends, who are often very good at criticizing the United States, say, when you look at the history of China, when did rebellions happen? It wasn't when the adults were damaged. It's when they feared for their children's future. Absolutely. That's the propulsion. And you and I have young children. I have two grandchildren, one on the way. The anxiety that often inhabits my daydream is, is what am I going to do for their future? And feeling confidence in that, I think, will calm an awful lot of nerves. And I think the Chinese have, a, have an insight there. I, I, I think that that's exactly right. And, and uh, uh, we can get into a, another conversation about the, how the, you know, the Chinese people are looking at internet usage and technology and so forth, but that's a conversation for another day. Sure. But that insight rega regarding fear and that insight regarding um, uh, how we look at the world as, as parents and grandparents and through the eyes of our kids and the world we're gonna leave for them right. is I think very, very powerful. And yeah. uh, I think we can turn this fear around because I haven't ever found or met a person that if there's, that won't trade fear for hope, if the hope is real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may be people trying to bombard you from finding or feeling the hope for their own narrow purposes. But I think the example that you're creating with this project and with your vision and your work and the team you're putting together is the basis for hope. And we'll, we'll conclude this chapter and we'll come back again. We'll talk about some more of those other dimensions. But I really am glad you could come in today and let me share with our audience the pathway you're on. I, I really, and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask a lot of people, check this out and join. I appreciate it a lot and be happy to come back anytime. I enjoy the conversation and you're a hugely thoughtful person. Well, so it's a, it's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank you.